Welcome to the basic 3D relief carving tutorial for VCAR Pro 8 and 8.5. One of the nice features of VCAR Pro 8 is that it includes 3D modeling tools as well as 3D toolpathing tools. In addition, it includes hundreds of dollars worth of clip art, which was not included with uh, previous versions. Before VCAR Pro 8, you had to use uh, Cut 3D or Partworks uh, 3D in order to do uh, create toolpathing for 3D models, and then you had to import it into VCAR Pro. Now that has been completely eliminated, and so uh, VCAR Pro 8 uh, handles what uh, used to be VCAR uh, Pro 7 along with Cut 3D or Partworks 3D. Only time you might need one of those uh, part, uh, cut 3D is when you're doing four-sided machining. Well, once we've seen these nice features that we're going to explore here, and first thing we're going to do is we have uh, I've already created a template uh, of a cutting board, and the, the purpose of this uh, template is it gives the customer a good preview of what the uh, the cutting board will look like after it's carved and this is one of the uh, very common use for uh, 3d relief uh, carving uh, and you'll see why that is we have a typical cutting board size thickness uh, 0.875 here the XY datum position is in the center because we're I'm going to be putting a Lindman hold down clamps on the corner of that cutting board and I don't want to uh, risk uh, hitting it with the bits we're going to close that and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the clip art file and there are two, uh, you just notice uh, some different styles cl uh, clip arts here. Right here if you see these, uh, this style right here, if I double click on that it will appear and then I can uh, adjust where I want to place it on the uh, material. If I try to drag it notice it's not going to let me do that. I go to this style right here. If I drag it, it will go on. Or if I double click, it will go on to the material. So uh, th that is the one distinction. Uh, double click, uh, double clicking will get that uh, image, 3D image, onto your material. So that is probably the easiest way to go. Now we're going to look at uh, the different styles of 3D clip art that come, and we'll go to the animals right now. And you notice uh, from left to right we have a style right here. If I hover the cursor over there, notice it has eagle head, and over there to the right it says A.3M, dot uh, uh, M, V three M. There's an A type, a B type, and a C type. So we're going to go ahead and put the, these images out there and we're going to talk about the different types. I'm going to go ahead and use the sizing handles to make those a little bit smaller so we can uh, take a look at them. Make this one a little smaller right here and then I'm going to bring out this one right here, the C type. The A type, and you'll see this easier if we go to the 3D view, the A type is raised, a raised model. This one is a dished model, and this has got a hand carved edge. Uh, so these are three types. If we go, if we take an isometric view, we get a better idea. For the purpose of this training for simple 3D relief carving, we are only going to be looking at these two types: the dished and the hand carved. The raised is a little bit more difficult to cut and involves some different techniques. So for this purpose, we're just going to eliminate this one right here by hitting the delete key. Then it's a matter of preference. Do I want to have the dished or do I want to have the hand carved? For the purpose of this tutorial, we will go with the uh, hand, I mean the uh, dished. The hand carved uh, will use the same type of tool pathing technique though and, and you'll understand why that is uh, uh, in just a minute. The next step I'm going to do is I want to size my 3D model so it will f uh, be large but not, uh, not, not uh, 
too close to the edges. The, uh, these are going to be the edges of the cutting boards. Once I've got the size I think I want, I'm going to hold down the shift key. Having selected the eagle first, I'll hold down the shift key and cl click this border. Now the only purpose of this border is for centering my image inside this uh, lower portion of the cutting board. I'm going to go to the drawing tab and I'm going to go where it says align objects and I'm going to go down here where it says center horizontally I'm going to go over here center and objects this is where I want to center center directly in the middle there and that's what I've done okay so once I've selected the selected my image it needs to be again either the dish or hand carved I'm going to go over and pick the, the type of uh, toolpath I'm going to use now notice we have a roughing toolpath here now the reason why we do not need a roughing toolpath uh, for this uh, for this operation and we only need the finishing toolpath is because as you'll see when I do the preview the finishing toolpath will either start at the bottom or the side if I'm using a raster strategy and you'll see that in just a minute it will gradually work its way over so when it starts cutting full depth it will only will actually probably be doing that full depth right into the, in the air as you'll see that Otherwise, uh, if the raised uh, image usually requires a roughing toolpath uh, uh, before you do the finishing toolpath. So I'm going to click on my finishing and I'm going to select eighth inch uh, ball nose bit. Now the type of bit you're going to be using to cut these will be a tapered ball nose and I'm going to edit that. Now if for some reason if this was a much larger image I might be able to go with a quarter inch uh, tapered ball nose if it was much smaller I would might, might have to use a sixteenth inch uh, what, what, when you do the preview uh, what you see is what you get so you'll be able to determine if that uh, is the correct size bit and I wanted it I want to keep the model boundary this is around this dish I want that to be our boundary no offset and there's two types of machining strategies. There's the offset where it would start with the middle and gradually work its way out or the raster. The raster is going to be either going I can do an angle but I want to do either with the grain or across the grain. And to start out with I want to do it with the grain so I'm going to go 90 degrees on that. That's 90 degrees. Zero degrees is horizontal and I'm going to edit that toolpath. I've got the 1 8 inch. The step over when you're doing the finishing toolpath is 10 percent. You don't really want to uh, exceed that because you're only going to go over a small amount because it's only going a small amount it will be going full depth on all of its cuts. And the feed rate uh, PRT alpha uh, I mean a PRT machine like the desktop or a PRT standard uh, uh, full-size machine limits around uh, four inches per second will be safe and will put 3.5 inches per second and at the same time we're going to usually uh, want to keep the feed rate and the plunge rate and the feed rate is your X and Y movements plunge rate is your Z at the same uh, same uh, uh, speed so we're going to click OK and I'm going to give this name 3D finish eagle vertical and then I'm going to calculate that toolpath and then we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to preview selected toolpath and I'm going to slow the speed down just slightly right here and I'm preview selected toolpath notice where it starts it starts right at this corner and then it goes deeper as it works away it works its way across now we'll be creating another toolpath that will go 90 degrees to this one for the purpose of it if we need uh, to make another toolpath to smooth out the image if it's smooth the first time then we do not need that second toolpath now notice when I do the isometric view actually that depth is almost perfect but let's say I was uh, let's say the wood I was using was uh, thinner than the point uh, eight seven five inches and I wanted to make this image a little bit uh, uh, not quite as deep so I'm going to go to, to our modeling tool pass and I'm, and I'm going to choose the scale the Z height of the model 
Right now it's at about 0.61. And I want to set it to the exact height. I'm going to set this down to 0.45. Apply. Close. And then I'm going to open up my toolpath here and calculate that again. And then I'm going to preview selected toolpath. First I need to reset that preview and re try that again. And notice that it is shallower now. Notice that it's shallower than what it was before. Now let's say I wanted to give it even a deeper one. I could go up to 0 0.72, apply, close this, go back in here, and I'm going to calculate this again. Every time you resize it, you need to recalculate it. And then I'm going to reset the preview and the preview selected toolpath. And notice it much deeper than it was before. Okay, I think we're going to keep it with that depth. I'm going to get out of there. And now I'm going to go over to my 3D finish toolpath. Remember, I said I was going to create another toolpath perpendicular in case I needed to do, to smooth that uh, out in case that was a rough finish. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate, double click and then I'm going to go in here. The only thing I'm going to change is have 90 degrees I'm going to put 0 degrees and instead of 3D finish vertical we're going to put 3D finish eagle horizontal horizontal let's spell it correctly and we're going to calculate now we're only going to be using this particular tool path if the first one did not give us a smooth finish now all these other tool paths that you see here the whole purpose of them is to actually to cut out this uh, to show you what that cutting board uh, would look like realistically now since I've got ready-made cutting boards, we're going to be carving this on. Uh, this is not going to, we're not going to be actually saving those uh, uh, tool paths. But let's go back in here and go back to our preview. And we're going to preview all tool paths. And I'm just going to have to double click on the waste material. There we go. And now we have a very realistic looking cutting board. That is very close to how that, it will, that will look once it's carved. Uh, again, I have a, a source for the, uh, I've used a source for these cutting boards. So I don't even have to worry about cutting, that, uh, cutting these out. If, for example, this was a solid block of wood, we could do that. But for the purposes of this training, we're reusing a ready-made cutting board that we're going to cut a 3D image. So really, to start with, all we're concerned about is actually saving that finishing toolpath. We can go up here, save toolpath, and I'll put all visible toolpath to one file. We only have one. It doesn't make any difference. We're going to select... The ShopBot tool process, the ShopBot selection right here. We're going to ShopBot arc inches with speed control. Now, uh, if this is a VCAR Pro uh, 8 ShopBot edition, you're only going to have one choice. So that's not going to be a problem for you. And then we'll save the tool path. But you can see how easy this was. To do and all you had to do was you go in here and again finding your clip art bring it out onto your cutting board sizing it doing your tool pathing and you're ready to go uh, it looks pretty easy and it is now you're now you're ready to do one yourself good luck